And so Destiny 2's beta just dropped today. I got my hands on it because I was stupid and I paid for the $100 pre-order package so I could get the Brian expansion pass. Destiny, if you haven't and noticed. I love Destiny. Absolutely love Destiny. So I'm just going to go over and give you my, my first reactions, first thoughts. This isn't going to be an actual review because you into can't that, review a beta. It's just, just not fair to anybody. Brian loves Destiny just a slight longer. Okay. If you look through the episodes of this show way back... One, we talk about Destiny a lot, but two, there's been many times a new video game, especially a new FPS, has come out, and Brian has talked about how, oh, this will finally pull me away from Destiny, and then within a week he's back on Destiny. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, full disclosure, away. I haven't really played Destiny since ooh, probably like December. So I, I had a good like three year run on it and kind of got burnt out. Once they announced Destiny 2, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to stop with the Destiny now, wait for the next one, kind of cleanse the palette with different games, and then I'll be ready to jump back into Destiny. So Destiny 2, the beta. Uh, now they they what they give you is they give you the first story mission, which actually is pretty epic. Uh, they give you a strike mission, which is kind of just a, a more grandiose uh, regular story mission, usually with a harder boss at the end. And they give you two multiplayer venues. Uh, they give you control and they give you um, uh, just regular so, four versus four. So is this uh, a beta or match. a demo? It's a beta. It's a beta. It sounds a lot so they like give a you demo. All that... No, well, like last year, like for the regular Destiny, the original Destiny, when that came out, they gave you all that stuff. Plus they gave you a playable area where you could walk around and kind of free roam. So it's actually smaller in comparison to the Destiny 1 beta but let's just jump into things so it kicks off you start off the first story mission now one of the things that bungie said that they were going to do which is kind of something they dropped the ball on which it's almost unanimous that they dropped the ball on it in destiny one was telling the story better i can tell you right now that if all of the story missions are very similar to the story mission first story mission they let us play they're definitely going to be number one introducing new characters number two developing the characters that we already know a whole lot more and number three just kind of giving us that backstory as giving us more of the motivation to as why we're doing what we're doing. So just in the first mission alone, the tower is getting attacked. They have a few cutscenes, a few awesome cutscenes. Um, you run into a couple characters that come in and out. You have a couple conversations mid mission with some of these characters and they kind of, they're saying, okay, here's this person. Here's this person. That's, this is what they can do. That's what they can do. And they're kind of just building into it. Now in the first one, they kind of said, Hey, there's an evil thing here around just uh, go find it and do stuff with it. And they didn't really explain it. This one, they have brought the bad guy. It seems like front and center. They told you exactly what he wants to do and pretty much take over the light from the traveler and kind of why he wants to do it because he feels the humans are inferior race and they don't deserve such power from the traveler. Um, and they're telling it in such a deep way. Now, one of the big things that I think most, if you're going to go wrong with your storytelling, I usually feel like you don't develop your villain enough because that is such an important aspect to the story. It's so easy to build somebody up as a hero. You just got to say, Hey, this guy's doing bad things and whoever beats him up is the hero, but the villain it can be a way more complex than, than, most people would get into some of the most iconic movies out there are so great because they have such great villains. That's true. And that's what it seems like. Complex got. heroes though, too. You can do the reverse. You so can, you can, you, I'm not saying you can't, you yeah. can, but Often, actually people do the, the villains being so like the form that you're talking about, but there is, um, there like Lord of the Rings series is actually an example of the opposite. You don't know much about the villain at all, but you know, but about you know, he's menacing, you know, he's evil, you know, they have to stop him. You know, all that like they build, he's, he's they build menacing. up enough animosity towards the villain enough, you know, but then fear they of this villain work more on the, the actual heroes and the heroes. Yeah, no, that's true. It, it, it is a, it is a story. You can do either primarily way. based on that. Yeah. And you can do, both. but I, I really like it where you build up the villain pretty well. Now Lord of the Rings is one of my favorite. It's my favorite trilogy of all time. So we won't get into that, but oh, yeah, like great, great villains but, are amazing too. X-Men with Magneto being the prime example of like yeah. that almost making that, some the of into movies. the yang, yin, yin and yang type thing, you know, balance. Um, and then, so they do establish this cabal leader. If you don't know who the cabal is, just, just watch a destiny video. They're big hulking brute guys. Um, and, and they set him up as number one, a thinker and number two, a really, really mean guy. So they, they show off that a little bit and that's in the first story mission. So, so far, so good. I'm enthralled. Uh, I, I enjoyed that a lot. So that's the storytelling, uh, number. Uh, and then another thing they did to switch it up is they have revamped the West weapon system. It used to be, uh, you had different categories of weapons. You had your primary, your special, and your heavy primary. It had to be a pulse rifle, scout rifle, assault, auto rifle, or hand cannon. 
then secondary or special had to be a sniper rifle, fusion rifle, or shotgun. And then you had heavy, which was rocket launchers and heavy machine guns. Well, they've kind of done away with that. They they kind of have they still have the three tiers of weapons, but the first two tiers are almost the same thing. So both tiers you have a kinetic weapon, and then you have a um, uh, burn weapon for lack of a better term. So the kinetic weapons are just regular weapons shoot. They don't have any special abilities to them, but that's still in the classes of uh, auto rifle, pulse rifle, scout rifle, and hand cannon. But then in your secondary slot, the the more the burn weapons, and when I say burn, there's uh, special, there's an arc burn, uh, solar burn, and a void burn, just, you know, attachments, elemental attachments to these weapons that can be used against different enemies to change things up. So you still have those main classes of weapons, um, the scout, pulse, and everything, but now those will have burns on them. So that changes that dynamic. And then the third class, the heavy class, now is uh, rocket launchers, grenade launchers, uh, shotguns sniper rifles fusion rifles i believe and also um the heavy machine guns so they've kind of switched it around and that definitely changes the dynamic not only in the main story but also in the multiplayer uh, i found it a lot different in multiplayer it really really changes it up a lot and they're gonna probably have to do some balancing with this because i was just running around with two pulse rifles and you know when the heavy comes out and it comes out pretty often i would just grab my grenade launcher ammo boom 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 get people kill them and then go back and it was it was interesting because in destiny one i had specific roles for each one of those weapons if i knew i was going to be fighting on a map that was a little bit long range okay boom i have a sniper rifle as my special i have a pulse rifle as my primary and didn't matter what my my, my heavy was but I, I could switch between those now if it's that maybe I go scout rifle for my primary and maybe a pulse rifle or a hand cannon, something with a little more kick uh, for my secondary. And then again, it doesn't really matter heavy because those are just, you know, the super weapons, but I no longer have that sniper or that shotgun. I, they kind of take away a lot of the close range combat that you had because shotguns running around, people will just be flying around sneaking up on you and, and shotgunning you. You don't have that anymore. Uh, you can't do that anymore unless you get the heavy drop. And then, yeah, this still can happen. Uh, but, but then sniper rifles, it takes those long range maps and condenses it. Now, another big thing that they have done that will affect this. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it right now, as I'm talking, it actually makes more sense. They've made the map smaller. They've also made the teams for team deathmatch smaller too. It used to be six for six. Now it's four versus four. So they're kind of bringing everything in a little bit more. So it would be better for shotguns, not as good for sniper rifles, but you know, they're changing the dynamic, but that's a basic weapon change. Now, I don't know how that's going to work out. I did enjoy it in the story mode, being able to run through, okay, boom, 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 boom. All right. Flip to the, the, the burn weapon and then flip back and then flip and then flip back without having to worry about too much, uh, you know, difference. Cause if I was switching in the destiny one, I would have to definitely either back up or get closer to use some of those special weapons. Now I can kind of keep my same range, same distance, mm -hmm. same, movements and, and still switch weapons on the fly and i found myself doing that a whole lot more like i would be running through boom 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 okay guy with a, a solar shield all right switch my solar secondary real quick take him out then right back to my primary whereas it might have been a slower transition um beforehand or i might not have gotten to it or i might not because you really have to change where you are so if i was going to be like okay solar sh uh, solar burn shield all i have is a solar shock and now i have to get super close to this guy now I, I don't necessarily i can back up i can I, it changes the style of play just a little bit um so it's interesting but again this is a beta so i don't know how this will be long term i can tell you this for boss fights it made them a hell of a lot harder the one boss fight i fought on the strike just because i couldn't back up a little bit with the sniper rifle that had a little more damage a little more impact um and you could stagger enemies with that now i have to be a little bit closer because i have those two main weapons that aren't as good long range and they do have a cool dynamic that they introduced back in destiny i want to say like lone wolves or taken king or something whereas like if you have an auto rifle those are designed to be a little bit more medium range weapons so if you're too far away the damage goes down um the closer you get the more the damage goes up whereas like pulse rifle uh it was better at farther distance than it was at closer distance so you know they they do still have that dynamic there and it does make it interesting and like i said i was switching weapons on the fly the the main enemy for the strike was this guy who could kind of teleport around and there was this one time where i'm shooting at him with my scout rifle from across the map 
and then he teleports right behind me. So what do I do? Boom, flip right over to my assault, my auto rifle, and I start wailing away while I'm backing up. And then as I got a little bit further back, boom, right back to my scout rifle. And it, it kind of gave me an interesting dynamic. It kind of kept me changing things a little bit more, and it was a little more fluid while I was changing things. So that is, I, I see it being a positive, but there are little things like I could get annoyed for some of the enemies like, wow, why can't I use my sniper rifle? This guy's all the way over there before I could just use my sniper rifle to take this guy out easy. Now I can't do that unless I have heavy ammo and heavy ammo is a lot harder to get than any of the other ammo. So it changes some of those dynamics there. Now, Crucible, uh, which is what they call their death match, um, really jumping in there. Everything was pretty good. They only have one map. I did find it really buggy, but again, this is the beta. There was a couple times where I would go up and punch people. I punched this one dude literally five times. It was like punch, 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 punch. And then he steps back and shoots me in the face and kills me. And then I see his health go all the way down and he dies. I'm like, what? What just happened here? I punched him five times before he got one shot off on me. And he kills me right away, and then it takes him two minutes to die. So there's the bugs and stuff, but that's to be expected with the beta. That's kind of why they do these betas, to kind of work some of those bugs out. So, yeah. Uh, I, I will say this, though, that matchmaking was a lot faster. It, it felt so much faster. It could be that everybody's on the beta right now, but it just felt like every time I jumped into something with the, the strike, you they match you up with two other people, and that felt like it was lightning quick. With the Crucible, they match you up with seven other people, in my case, because I was, you know all by myself i'm a loser i have no friends but um <laughs> but it was lightning fast so there are a lot of changes that it seems like they've made that are good uh, i really don't know what to say negative about it because it really is just destiny but with more polish to it um and so maybe that's my negative maybe it's not enough of a change from the original destiny to really keep me going on that next three-year cycle but if they drop content at more of a regular basis, which I've been told they would, they keep that story engaging and engrossing, maybe I'll grow more attached to it and be cool with it. I, I, I don't know. Time will tell. I've already pre-ordered it. Like I said, I'm going to get it when it comes out on the 6th of September, and I'm going to play a lot of it. I can guarantee that. And so we will give you a full review of it. But in terms of the beta, I was pleased. Didn't see anything crazy. I don't know if I would call this Destiny 2 might be just destiny new expansion that revamps a lot of things mm -hmm. would be a more accurate title for it uh but again i just got the beta so hit me up let me know what you think did you enjoy the beta uh, more or less than me hey i, I don't know i'm kind of in the middle so let me know what you think comments down below of course at what's my face on twitter google plus and facebook oh is good ways getting a hold of us that's